I'm gonna start off and share with you guys my first rapture dream that I had that the Lord showed me. So I remember sitting in the backyard um, with my husband and I just remember getting up, you know, and just going inside the room by my room door and I just stood right there and I crossed my hands and I prayed and you know, I prayed and asked God to know, you know, to show me where I stand with him, you know, if I'm lukewarm or anything. And um, I believe I did pray for a rapture dream when I was. And to be honest, you know, after I had prayed, you know, in the room by myself, I had no intentions in thinking that, you know, God was going to show me a rapture dream right then and there. Well, before I, well, after I went to sleep and stuff like that. So I just remember going, leave after praying, I remember just going back outside, you know, chilling and stuff like that. And then like that very same night, I had a dream and I saw myself on the ground in a fetal position with my hands like, like this crying, sobbing, praying, you know, just crying and begging God, you know, begging God to take me with him. And while I'm crying on my knees in a fetal position, I look up and I see a cloud portal. And as I'm looking up, I'm seeing like these blue illuminated lights, like lightning bolts, like just shooting up in the sky. And I'm crying, looking up. And while I'm seeing like these lightning bolts shooting up in the sky, it can't now that you know i understand what it means those were souls being like caught up in the air with the i guess to meet the lord so i'm crying and i'm like lord please take me with you don't leave me and let me tell you guys the way that i was crying in this dream i never cried like this ever in my entire life and being on this earth i never felt a cry a sorrow a sobbing the way that i was the way that I was and like I said like the souls that was being lifted they was like illuminated blue like it was so pretty though like the it, it was so pretty like how they were shooting up in the air but they were shooting up fast and I'm just crying crying begging God like Lord please don't leave me here I don't want to be left here please don't leave me here so as I'm like I said, as I'm seeing these souls being lifted up in the sky, I'm getting ready to prepare myself to be lifted up in the sky. And I believe that I um I stood up or I was still on the ground on my knees and I think I raised my hands and that's when I woke up. Now let me tell you, I had never been so scared in my life. And um, at the time, I didn't. At the time, I didn't understand, um, you know, when I had that dream, why I had that dream. But I genuinely believe now that the Lord was showing me that I was lukewarm, or that this is how people are, you know, who are left behind, you know, um, after the rapture is going to feel. And let me tell you guys, you do not want to be left behind during the tribulation. Like, what you guys see in the movie with the movies 2012 and, like, these, like, horrible, horrible things that's going to happen. You do not want to be left here. And I continue to, like, stress this upon my kids, my daughter, every time. Like, you do not want to be left here. Like, now is the time to, like, seek God and get right with him. And, like I said, I never felt a cry. I never cried like that the way that I was crying in my dream. Like, no, like this is no joke at all so i really encourage you guys like if you're struggling in your faith struggling and believing god and you feel like you just keep messing up and you don't want to keep disappointing god just keep praying spending time in his word reading even if you have to like read like five ten minutes a day like spend time reading god's word that is how the lord speaks to you especially through prayer the lord speaks to your heart but mostly spending time in his word reading the bible um and you know like i said previous like if you 
have a hard time believing that God's word is real and that you just feel like the Bible is made up and stuff like that. Humble yourself. Go in a quiet place. Get away from your friends. Get away from your family, whoever, and just go. Even if it's in a room or even if you're at your workplace, go in the bathroom and really, like, see God's face and ask God to reveal himself to you to show you that God is real, that his word is wor- His word is real and stuff like that. And um, I also want to tell you guys another dream that I had. That was the first one, and this is the second one. But the second one was more like a vision and stuff like that. Um, I And it was very short. But I remember being at my mom's house, and I was just so tired. And that whole entire night, I could not go to sleep. So the next morning, I was getting ready to go home. And I just, my body was so tired. And before my mother left, um, she told me to give her a second. So I remember just walking in the living room and I just threw my body on the couch and I fell asleep. And then all of a, and then all of a sudden I see myself, I believe I was standing alone, but I see myself looking up at the clouds and all around me. It just seemed like everything was either like a yellowish, like tent, like vision but as I'm looking up I seen Jesus literally in the clouds on a white horse and he had like this rod stick in his hand and um the interpretation that I got from that vision was like the Lord is waiting in waiting in the clouds and you know it's so many people out there that be like i heard god saying been saying i heard people t- telling me that god was going to come back like when i was in middle school and in elementary and stuff like that but if you know god's word his word says in second peter 3 9 the lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness instead he is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance so basically we are rushing for jesus to come back and you know take his church and stuff like that but god loved us so much and he loved the world so much that he don't want anybody to go to hell like do y'all not know that hell is forever eternal punishment being tormented by demons forever and ever and ever and i know jehovah witness people they don't even believe in stuff like that but it's true god don't want nobody to go to hell and you know me looking up in the cloud like the lord is just waiting he is patient and we just like wanting god to Like, we're wanting God to just come back and just, like, take us from, like, the pain of this world, like, the stress of this world and everything that we're going through. But it's people out here, you know, and I'm understanding more and more, like, man, like, I be, I pray for my friends. I be praying for people that, you know, on Facebook and social media, people who still in the clubs, people who still smoking weed, doing drugs, drinking alcohol and you know just partying their life away and then you know saying that they still have a relationship with God at the same time and you know I'm not judging because I used to be in that lifestyle as well it's just like we can't you know be in the world and then say that we have a relationship with God because how can anyone tell the difference from a saved person versus someone that's in the world and don't really know God at all or have a relationship with God when we look just like the world that's lukewarm and like you know like I said I have no judgment at all but you know I spend my time too on social media and the Lord be convicting me of that as well like you know I spend so much time, I can sit here and spend so much time on social media, scrolling, looking at, you know, what people got going on and doing and stuff like that. But when it comes to the word, I get sleep, The you know, his word and, you know, spending time reading, I get sleepy, I get drowsy, or I'm not spending as much time that I would on social media than in his word. So, you know, I have to, I'm starting to limit my time and stuff like that on social media, but Yo, man, I wouldn't even wish my enemy or someone that didn't like me to hell or anything. Like, that's not a place. I wouldn't want to see nobody go there. 
And I really want everybody, you know, to just truly seek God and truly have a relationship with God. Sis, brother, homeboy, friend, whoever, ex, enemy, enemy, please give it to God. It's not worth it to be held and be in hell because you didn't want to forgive somebody while you was living in the world. It ain't worth it. Trust me. It ain't worth it.